Right then guys, little cheeky afternoon off work. Um, I've got a load of more um, stuff in from Travis Perkins. I've got stuff ready for screening. I've got like building sand. I've got like uh, another two, 300 blocks. Uh, this turned up as well. So uh, it's a 316 um, perforated um, stainless steel sheet. Um, which is a meter by two meters. So that is what's going to slot down basically uh, to filter the water through to keep the media in where the pumps are going to be situated down here. So um, another thing I've done as well during the week is dig this out, put a nice solid base down there, put a nice foot in there. So that foot in is pretty much as deep as the pond. So that's solid. Um, ready for the actual wall is going to come across here. So I'm going to shutter that up later on and make another nice flat footing ready to go on to onto gauge pretty much here. So I'll just make it as high as that little um, course there all the way across. But today what I'm going to do is build my um, bio chamber. So I don't want this to like sort of like collapse in. So Nicky boy unfortunately is absolutely tied up in work. He's up Ross on Y, which is about two hours away from me, building with the building inspectors. So uh, he's got his hands full. So because I'm off and the weather's lovely. Much to his disgust when he sees this, I'm going to get this bio bed in. Now, I'm not going to do any block work that's totally visible uh, on the back of the pond and all that kind of stuff. However, what I might do if I've got enough compo left over is start bedding some of the uh, tiles in that needs to be bedded in before he actually does the block work. So. That's probably what I'm going to do today is complete the bio chamber and do that. Now, I'm not going to do, you know, well, when the cat's away, the little Lee boy's going to play. Sterling Customs again, go and check those. SES boys that make absolutely fantastic motorbikes. So um, that's what we're going to do today, guys, is that. But I can tell you that sheet over there of the uh, stainless steel perforated um, saw is... Uh, Mate, the price on stainless steel, 160, uh, 316 is horrendous. So thanks for everyone that's um, commented to um, tell me about like the, um, the uh, two inch pipe, but I've bought some two inch pipe and I've sent it to my mate Carl, who is going to um, weld a couple of 90s onto two 1100 um, millimeter pipes, which will uh, work perfect for the backies. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting those in the post at any time soon. It's going to be like Christmas, isn't it? But um, yeah, I've had a couple, of, um, uh, a couple of spanners in the works today. I've gone down to get some stuff from Travis Perkins. They said they could deliver today, so I've had to do that. I've got about another one, two, three, four ton, four ton of stuff to bring through after I finish doing this. Uh, but it is what it is. Pond's looking good, everything's gone off, absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I've been doing this in the evenings. Now I'm ready to block up. I've got the afternoon off, so this is gonna get done. Um, the sooner that gets done, the sooner then I can get on to digging the opposite side out to start doing the pipe work from the bottom drains and then backfilling that. And then I can do my base then to get my new profi stainless steel drum that I bought. So I've been very, very lucky Someone, um, Craig McNeish from uh, Mad About Koi, absolutely stellar guy. Is that an expression? But I think he does drink Stella. But anyway, uh, fantastic guy. I, I don't have Telegram. And uh, he said, you know what, Lee? There's a lovely guy called Dan who's selling uh, a couple of Profi 65 um, stainless steel drums. Uh, if you want one, use his number. And I was like, ah, boom. So I got there. An extremely expensive drum, guys. I think they retail for six and a half grand, but I got it at a lovely price because it's a few years old. But like I said, you know, those drums are the Rolls Royce, aren't they, really? So um, it's the actual drum that I've actually dreamed about putting in this pond, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't let Yasmin buy me a six and a half grand drum. That's uh, asking a little bit too much of a loved one, isn't it? Even though she would at the drop of a hat. So... Um, I'm actually going to buy that myself and uh, I think for Christmas she reckons she's going to be buy me my dream koi. So uh, yeah, that's a really exciting prospect, isn't it? So I'm sure that's going to be a, a hoot. So um, to that end of things, let's get 
the bio system done, dig out, put the pipe work in, and get the nice base done ready for my stainless steel drum, which I'm picking up on Monday. So it's a round trip of about eight hours to get up to Milton Keynes and back, but um, it's totally worth it. So I'm gonna set off here on Monday about five in the morning, get up there for about nine-ish, something like that. And then uh, say hello to Dan, cross his palm with some silver and take away a drum. So the one thing that I would say about that is it's not really money wasted because I've got to invest in that drum. Um, it's in perfect working order. So it's very good for the environment as well. We're recycling by the way. So I've got the new drum there. And when I collapse my old system down, then I'll get what that Awaz drum is worth second hand. Well, it's not, it's not even nine months old, but what that's worth second hand is what I'm paying for my new profi drum. So um, it's just handing the money over and then putting the money back in my wallet, you know, further down the line. So uh, ain't too bad as long as I can bridge that uh, financial gap, which I'm sure I can. So I've got all the stuff for screeding as well. So uh, what I've done is um, my mate Nicky uh, suggested that I get um, like a six mil or five mil all in. Uh, Travis Perkins didn't do it. So what I've done is I've got a ton of sharp sand and I've got a ton of uh, six mil chipping. So I'll mix those in together to make a nice dry mix. And then we're gonna do the screed in this weekend. So that's gonna be a nice little um, video coming out anyway. Anyway, let's stop talking, stop talking crap and let's get on with this. Mix is on. Ooh. Lovely jubbly. So that's the moving bed. 550 gallons. Um, drums go in here. Pipes are down there. We're going to have a four inch pipe going through. We're going to have an air ring through here, bubbling it all through. Then I've got that perforated sheets over there, which is uh, 3 16 that is going to go in here. I might make like a little trough with it. So it's like that. And then the pump will fit inside there with two returns equally spaced for the correct sort of like line. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, lovely. Mm. Yeah, baby. What's that for? I used to live the other side of that mountain. Right, so there's my plan for screeding. What I've done is I've caught, uh, the drain is exactly under those two there. I've cut a form for each drop perfectly uh, in line. So what I'm gonna do is screed this section here, which gives me a three inch or four inch drop to this central trough. And then this will be, when it's fiberglass, like a, a, an inch lower trough in between the two drains. Uh, otherwise, if I screed all the way to the drains, you're not going to get a very nice finish. So, I don't know, just fancy doing this. It's something different, isn't it? Um, and let's see what's occurring, I guess. So, there we are, guys. There's my dry mix mixing. It's a combination between sharp sand, five mil uh, chipping, and obviously, it's like four to one mix. Wolfie's up there, but um, my first attempt at screeding. It's actually going okay. I don't know if you can see that, but um, hello, big boy. Oh, you got a robot? You got a robot dinosaur? So, um, yeah, that's going quite well. It's really hot at the moment, so I'm doing it in the shade, and then I'm going to keep on going then all the way through the evening until I uh, until I crack all of this. So <laughs> that was the plan that I was coming up to. Is basically we're screening off this uh, off my block on my bricks on the side off the wall. And I've made a form here. Also, what I've got there is 18 mil. What's that? Half an inch, an inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever. But that will be, when I remove this, it does two things. It actually gives me a nice stop for the screed in. Um, and also, it, uh, it'll create a nice little channel. And it also protects the drains from any kind of, you know, crap getting in them, obviously. But... Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not 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 well, well, it's not too difficult. But anyway, uh, another thing I've done as well. I'm waiting for Nikki to come up. Um, I've situated my backy showers how they're actually going to be placed. Um, 
So if you can see the block on the back there, that is gonna be five blocks high there. I've left a tiny little gap. Can't walk on my screed yet. But if you can see there, there's a tiny little gap between the uh, block and the actual um, backy shower. That's for cladding the back of the of the wall, actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clad it with, th with this slate here. So the whole back will be clad with that. But uh, yeah, it fits perfect there. Um, and obviously the water height is going to be here, so we're at least at least nine to ten inches off the off the water height. So no koi is ever going to bang their heads off there unless I decide to keep salmon. Um, so again, they're just placed there as sturdy as anything, but um, that's just a gauge for Nicky boy. I'm hoping Nicky's going to come up uh, in the next uh, couple of days to block in this wall. Obviously, I don't want to attempt that wall myself because that needs to be proper bang on. But what I have done in the meantime, don't look at that block work, but not too shabby, it's okay. Um, this is my moving bed. So uh, I hope everyone's starting to get to the gist of what I'm coming up with now. So that's my moving bed. Um, it's not quite as deep as the slab there. It's one, it's one block on flat up from, sla from slab level. Uh, the reason that is because when I put the purge in the corner, it has to be above the drain height. So that's the reason why. I've dug out this here ready to start putting the, the drainage in, but I'm actually gonna pick up my drum on Monday. So I don't wanna mess around with this drainage until I get that drum. So um, yeah, cracking on with that at the moment. Um, and like I said, screeding, it's actually coming on okay. So uh, I don't wanna shoot myself in the foot by talking too fast, but uh, too soon, but Another thing I've got, guys, is I bought some of this. Uh, it's 3 16th gauge um, perforated sheet, three mil holes, five mil spaced apart, I think, or something like that. But that, believe it or not, cost 250 quid. So incredible price on that. But anyway, it's something that I needed. So, and I'm actually only using about half of that sheet. So I'm gonna have a lot left over for future projects. And the reason I'm only gonna use half the sheet, guys, is because I was considering putting the sheet all the way down there, so giving me a 12 inch void. But now what I'm gonna do is, basically, is come down here about two blocks and then cut in at a 45 degree angle, which gives me pretty much a gully. Do you know what I mean? So that would be the gully where all my pump and, uh, and uh, outlets will sit for this bio chamber. And what I'll do is I'll put a video on about, well, the rough drawing. Bearing in mind, I'm actually gonna put a ball valve just before the pump as well. So I've got the two slide valves to vary, to regulate the flow. Uh, and I've also got a ball valve in front of the, um, of the uh, 20,000 vary pump to, to actually isolate everything off. And what? I need a small hunk who knows how to use a screwdriver. Do you know anyone? You need a small hunk that yeah! needs to be, okay. Come down here quicker. I'm on a bit of a time schedule here, my love. It's a robot. <laughs> Why is it always boiling hot when you want to do something kind of grafty? Yeah, well, I'm kind of just under halfway down now, guys. So there we are. You can see that that is, well, better than I thought I could do, to be honest. So, um, We've got another mix to do there. This takes six mixes, that takes two mixes. So um, should go off by tomorrow. Then I can probably prise up these little bits of timber, um, backfill that with some dry mix. I'll just do a small mix for that and um, probably be able to take up this. So I might even leave that down again tomorrow just to make sure it proper goes off hard and sets. Uh, yeah, buzzing guys, buzzing. Lovely jubbly. I don't know if you can see where my returns are going to be. So Wolf has taken them off, but there's going to be one there, one there, one there, and one there. So those two come from the bio chamber. That one's going to come from the heat pump. And that one's just going to come from, well, who knows where. And it's just going to be a standard, you know, in basically. So uh, might do the two bottom ones from the heat pump. We'll see how the, uh, how I work the, um, the pipe work, but the reason why, why those are going to be a bit lower is because I want them underneath the floor of the slab. So they're going to be basically there just below the surface of the slab. 
So to that case, to that end of the stick, what I'm gonna have to do is drill a hole through there, through this one, and actually put the pipe through the bio chamber, which is not gonna be seen, but that's the best way to do it. Straight up then into the air source heat pump, back down and across. So I don't know whether, and then I might just do another one, return for that side. So we'll see, but uh, yeah, certainly ain't too shabby guys. Certainly ain't too shabby. Backfill my sister's side. What I'll have to do is cut off this little bit of slate. Unless she wants to keep it, it might be nice for her pot potted plants. But uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that basically where these blocks are is how I worked out where I wanted my returns. Um, and the reason I wanted them at different heights is because I want to create flow throughout the pond layers. Um, and the reason I've put the ones lower on the outside is because they're gonna create a bit of a draft on the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and I've actually got an air ribbon to go all the way across down this side, or I could put it down this side. So I've got another great idea for that. Bought it already, so uh, we'll see what happens there. Right here then, guys. Um, it's getting a bit late now, to be honest. I want to go in and relax and have a glass of wine. So that's half of the floor done. That's probably just as well I'm relaxing now because um, I need to take that one out to fit there because I've only got three pieces of timber. But uh, I think now everyone can kind of get, if you go back on my videos with my original idea, well, there it is. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not that dim. Uh, at, at times and um, like I'm saying that is in my mind the easiest and the best way to get an absolute perfect slope all the way around the pond um, and you know what guys I know it's not actually needed but I just wanted to do it this is going off a treat now to be honest I'm uh, never done this before guys so uh, I've done the same mix as what Nikki uh, has told me to do um, I think that's semi-dry. This is the one I've just laid, so it's still it's still quite packed down. But uh, yeah, and then when I take these boards off, Bob's your uncle. I'm gonna have one hell of a nice little gully there. Um, yeah, like I said, I didn't want to leave these straight because I think you'll definitely get build up of sediment. Um, I'll tell you what I did do though. If anybody can remember, I was gonna get that curved thing to go on the sides. I bought a load of it, I bought like 25 meters, but it's just not, it's not, it's no, no good for the job. So I wasted a bit of cash there, but it is what it is. But uh, no, it's, it's definitely not right for the job. Um, so what I might have to do is my 45s again. I am considering getting treated timber and putting the 45s in with the treated timber because you actually get a perfect finish with those. Um, it's treated, it's gonna last a long time. There's not gonna be much damp inside the ponds, you know, and even if there is, Matt's fiberglass in it, so the corners are gonna be absolutely bomb proof. So even if I end up staying in this house for the next 40 years and those rot away, those timber, uh, the, the corners of the, uh, of the pond are still gonna hold fast, I know they are. Um, alternatively, we could cut the um, insulation boards to a nice 45 degrees. But like I said, I don't really want to wait till Matt comes down. I want to get it all ready for him to fiberglass because um, I don't want him fanning around or titivating bits and bobs because uh, I'm quite fussy. So um, I, I wouldn't want him to come down and, and you know throw some 45s on there. I, I want it to be right, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, I'm really, really happy with the floor, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really happy with the situation of that as well. So um, I got a fantastic guy coming down tomorrow, Carl. Uh, he's got all my stainless steel bits and bobs that I need for the pond build. Um, and, uh, well, he just went to come for a spin with his missus down here. So uh, I can't thank him enough. Um, Going to stick some petrol money in his bank account. Don't tell him. Um... But yeah, fantastic. 
and uh, really, really looking forward to seeing my stainless steel bit. So um, you never know, you might have another little video tomorrow and you might have another one on Monday. Depends if Nikki comes down here. Come on, Nikki, we're waiting on you, pal.